Welcome back. You know, it's getting very tiring listening to smug and arrogant American politicians and their counterparts around the world get on national television and pressure the Jews in Israel to give up their land. Well, the question is, whose land is it anyway? Well, the scriptures are very clear. The land belongs to God, and he gave it to his people, the Jews, over 4,000 years ago. Over 300 times in the Bible, it says that the land belongs to the Jews. In Genesis chapter 12, verses 1, 2, and 3, God promises the land to Abraham and his descendants, the Jews. In chapter 13, verse 15, God says that it will be assigned to them forever. In chapter 15, verse 18, God says that the land is from the river of Egypt to the great river Euphrates. Now that's all the way in Iraq, and that's about 300,000 square miles. Under King David, Israel only possessed about 30,000 square miles, and now they only possess about 8,000 square miles. In Genesis chapter 17, verse 8, God says that it is an everlasting possession. In Exodus chapter 6, verse 8, God says that he will give it to the Jews as a heritage. In Deuteronomy chapter 1, verse 8, God says that the land is given to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and their descendants. Now, during our Lord's millennial reign, when our Lord Jesus Christ comes back and reigns on this earth for a thousand years, all 300,000 square miles will be in Israel's possession and there is nothing that anyone will be able to do or say about it. Now, a lot of people always say to the Jews, you guys you need to make peace with the Arab world. You need to make peace with, with, with the Muslims and with the Palestinians. But how do you make peace with people who do not even believe that you have a right to exist? That's like asking America to make peace with Osama bin Laden and the Taliban. They, they want to kill us. They don't believe that we have a right to exist, and if they had a chance, they would wipe us off the face of the earth, and that's exactly what a lot of the Muslims want to do with Israel. Now, it has been documented that the Muslims say one thing in English and something else in Arabic. That has been documented many times. Now, Ahmadinejad in Iran has called for the complete eradication of Israel and the Jews. He wants to wipe them off the map. And it's amazing that when he said that, not a single Muslim leader said anything about it. They did not condemn him. There was a deafening silence in the Muslim world when he said that. I think it is naivete for us to believe the Islamofascist. Nothing that they say is true. Every time they open their mouths, it's always lies. Lies, lies, lies. And I think it, it is naivete on the part of our State Department and our new President Obama to think that he can make uh, peace with the Muslim world in Israel. The fact is that um, he can't because the Muslims do not want peace. They want to wipe Israel off the map. Now, speaking about the wicked, Psalm chapter 28 verse 3 says, they speak peace to their neighbors, but evil is in their hearts. In Psalm chapter 55 verse 21, it says, the words of his mouth were smoother than butter, but war was in his heart. His words were softer than oil, yet they were drawn swords. Now, if that's not a picture of the Islamofascists, I don't know what is. They go to the, the peace conference and the peace table and they say, peace, peace. But in their hearts, it's all about war. They just cannot wait to wipe Israel off the face of the map, off the face of the earth. Now, you and I as Christians know that there will never be peace on this earth or anywhere else, anywhere else at all, uh, not only in Israel, but on the earth, until the Prince of Peace, our Lord Jesus Christ, comes back to this earth. No peace will stand until our Lord Jesus Christ comes back. There will always be wars. In Joel chapter 3, verse 2, God says that he will punish those who divide up his land. And it's amazing to go back and look at the history of all the people who tried dividing up the land of Israel and see what has happened to them. You know, um, a few years ago, this gentleman wrote a book, and I believe the name of it was Eye of the Storm. And in there, he documented what happened to America, all the calamities that happened to America whenever uh, an American president pressured the Prime Minister of Israel, any Prime Minister, to give up land. And I think the very last time that happened was in 2005 when uh, President Bush pressured Ariel Sharon to give up land in Israel. He did. He dragged the Jews from out of their land and he gave it to the Palestinians who immediately destroyed it. And um, right after George Bush did that, Katrina happened. And of course, you know what happened. It was like a hundred billion dollars worth of damage. And um, President Bush never recovered after that. And right after that also, Ariel Sharon got a stroke. So um, 
the, this gentleman who wrote the book, he documented that every time someone tries to pressure Israel, um, calamity always happens. And that's exactly what God says here in Joel chapter 3, verse 2, that he will punish those who divide up his land. So the question is, whose land is it? As I just stated, and as I've given you the scriptures, over 300 times the Bible says the land belongs to God, and he gave it to his people, the Jews. It doesn't matter what the American State Department says, it doesn't matter what the EU says, or what the UN, or what the Russians think. The, God, the land belongs to the Jews. God gave it to them, and um, we need to respect that, because if we don't, then God makes it very clear that he will punish anyone who tries to d divide that land. God bless.